Today we're going to show you how to make the ultimate survival bracelet. Alright guys, welcome back to the Pilot Patriot channel. Now today we're going to show you how to make the ultimate survival bracelet. Most of you are probably already familiar with paracord bracelets, probably already have one of your own. Uh, but this is not your typical paracord bracelet and uh, I'll show you why here in just a minute and then we'll give you a demonstration on how to make this for yourself and we'll talk about the purpose of having something like this and how it could benefit you in a uh, survival situation. Now I'm sure you already know there are a million and one uses for paracord from using it as fishing line to tying up tents and shelters and things like that. Really a million and one different uses for this and there's plenty of videos on YouTube that'll tell you the uses for paracord. Now one of the things that's special about this bracelet is the type of paracord. If you're familiar with paracord already, paracord is a type of cordage that has been used in the past for military parachutes and things like that. And the reason people like it and use it a lot in survival situations and for rope and things like that is because it is extremely strong for its size. Now standard 550 paracord is a pretty small cordage, but because of the way it's made, it has a strength that can withstand 550 pounds of weight. That's why they call it 550 cord. Now just a quick note guys, I am going to put links to all these things in the description below so you can get one for yourself. Uh, also, if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we upload new videos. But like I said, this isn't your typical 550 cord. This is what you would call survival cord or wilderness cord. Now, as you can see, it has your typical seven strands of nylon cord inside but it's got some extras in there. And those extras actually make it even stronger. So this wilderness cord here actually has a strength of 650 pounds, not just 550 uh, like regular paracord. Now here's a close up of uh, what you'll find inside of this wilderness cord. So like I said, you'll have your typical seven strands of nylon cord that you see in all 550 cord. Um, this can be used as fishing line, um, you can pull these out individually and use them by themselves. It also has this Dyna X cord right here. Dyna X is a material that you're starting to see in a lot of uh, bulletproof vests and things like that because it's so lightweight and so strong. Now this right here, this Dyna X is going to be lighter weight than um, the typical nylon cordage and it's also going to be twice as strong. The next thing you see here, that red, is called a Nano Aramid cordage. Now uh, this is a Kevlar product and uh, this cordage here by itself has 110 pound strength. It's also very, very heat resistant up to 900 degrees. This can be used to hold up cooking pots and things like that. There are a lot of good uses for that as well. And what you see right here, that is a waxed jute twine. And you can see here if you pull that wax off you can start to fray that jute twine. And that's what that's for. It's meant to be used as a fire starter. Uh, and what the wax does is just keeps it waterproof or mostly waterproof. So when you uh, pull this out of your paracord, you can scrape that wax off and fray that twine and it'll take a spark really well and the wax will actually help it burn longer. So um, that wax jute twine is gonna be a great fire starter. And I don't have to tell you how important it is to have a good fire starter with you. Um, so if you're wearing this type of bracelet, then you always have a way to start fire. And last but not least, you got a 10 pound monofilament fishing line, where with regular paracord, you would have to use one of these nylon cordage and try to make that work as fishing line. Uh, the survival cord or wilderness cord will have actual fishing line in it. Now one of the other great features of this bracelet is the buckle. And if you can see here, the buckle actually has a ferro rod and scraper inside of it. So this fire starter paired with the uh, jute twine in there, you have a self-contained fire kit right there on your wrist. Now I'll demonstrate this and actually make a fire with it later, but pretty self-explanatory. You just unbuckle it and then you use the scraper to scrape that ferro rod and it'll spray sparks. The buckle also has a whistle on it 
this is a nice loud whistle. I'll uh, take it off camera and blow it so you can hear it. So um, obviously the whistle will come in handy in an emergency if you need um, to signal for help or something like that. Uh, that whistle will help get people's attention. And a couple other things you'll see I have on here um, is some Ranger bands. Now a Ranger band is basically just a rubber band or a, like a bicycle tube uh, cut down. And it can be used for a lot of things. Primarily um, you can use it just like you would a rubber band or uh, its purpose on the bracelet is to attach other things that aren't woven into it. And I'll show you that in a minute. I actually have a, something hidden in here underneath this Ranger band. Also, this stuff is a really great fire starter. So if you can light this on fire, it's going to burn for a really long time. Now, last but not least, I'll go ahead and open this. I do have a little hidden tool right here underneath uh, that ranger band. So let me get that ranger band out of the way. And what you see here is a handcuff key. And I just have it shoved up in here underneath a couple of those strands of the paracord. And I hold it down and keep it hidden with that ranger band to make sure it doesn't come out. Now this is what it looks like outside of the bracelet. And keep in mind guys, I am going to um, put links to all these things in the description below. Now why would you want a handcuff key in your bracelet? Now, uh, first off, let me tell you, I am not advocating any of you um, escaping or evading the police. If the police have you in custody, you probably have done something wrong. So this is not for that purpose. Um, the only reason you would need to have your own hidden handcuff key is if someone other than the police tried to put you in handcuffs, you would have a way to get out. And that's more of an emergency situation without rule of law. Somebody may try to put you in handcuffs. And if you are wearing this bracelet, then you will potentially have a way to get out of it. And you'll just stuff it right down in there. And it's nice and hidden and out of the way. All right, now, as you can see, it looks just like a normal paracord bracelet to the average person. Unbeknownst to them, there is a, an entire survival kit right here on your wrist. Now, let me get in here and show you how to uh, make this, and then we'll demonstrate some of these things like that fire starter. Now, make sure you have enough paracord. You're going to need uh, about a foot per inch of bracelet. So once you have that, you're going to fold it in half, and you're going to take that folded end and you're going to feed it through uh, one, one side of your buckle. And once you feed it through a little bit, you're going to grab the paracord from the other side and, and pull it through all the way until that loop tightens, securing it to the buckle. Then you're going to take your other two ends and feed it through the other side of the buckle. And once you're sure you have the right size, you're gonna unbuckle it and try to hold it there so you can keep that spot. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna separate it so you have your inner bracelet band in the middle and the two loose ends separated on the right and left side. Now um, it doesn't matter which side you start with, I started with the right side. So you're gonna take that right side and you're gonna cross it over the two middle strands. Once you've done that, you're gonna take the left side, you're gonna cross it over top of the right side and under and behind and you're going to pull it out through that loop you created on the right side. Feel free to pause this anytime um, so you can uh, keep the pace. Now once you've pulled it through, you're going to pull, start to pull it tight while you work that knot up closer towards the buckle. And once you get it where you need it, just go ahead and pull it tight. Now once you've got your first knot done, you're going to repeat the process but you're gonna start on the opposite side. Cross it over the middle, you take that right side, you bring it over top of that strand, and then you're gonna bring it behind and around and back through that loop you created. And you're gonna pull it out and then just pull it tight. And just like you did before, you're gonna work that knot up nice and tight to the one above it. And then we're gonna go back and start on the right side. And you're just gonna repeat this process all the way down until you get to the bottom of your bracelet. Now, once you get down to the bottom of your bracelet, you can see I'm getting pretty close here. So I'm just gonna continue tying that knot, alternating sides each time until I get all the way down to my next buckle. Now, once you've completed that final knot and you've got it nice and tight and you're all the way down to uh, your other buckle, you're gonna take your scissors 
and you're going to cut off those loose ends. Um, you leave about a quarter inch of uh, paracord sticking out. That's what you're going to melt down later to make sure it uh, stays in place and doesn't unravel. And once you've got both sides cut, you're going to take your lighter and you're going to start to heat it up. You can go ahead and put the flame right on it if you want to. I like to do that to get a nice dark black end. Um, but go ahead and put your flame right on there and you're just going to start to melt. Now as it melts down and gets a nice bead of melted paracord um, pretty close to the end, you're going to take your lighter and you're just going to flatten it down with your lighter and get it nice and smooth up against the bracelet. And you're just going to do that for both sides. And once you've got both sides melted and uh, flattened out, you should be good to go. Um, that will prevent it from unraveling. Um, but it is pretty easy if you want to, um, to pull that out and unravel your bracelet if you need it in a survival situation. Now we're going to go ahead and take our handcuff key and our ranger band and I'll show you how to put that on there. Uh, first thing you need to do is just go ahead and break apart that key so you can separate the key from the coin. And then you're going to take your ranger band and you're going to feed it over. Now that's going to be very tight. So it may take a little work to get it down to where you want it, but um, just pull it over and stretch it into place. Now I don't have this part on video, but uh, once you get it down to where you want it, um, you can put anything you want under there. Uh, in our case, we're, putting, we're just going to shove a handcuff key up under there. Uh, to keep it secured in place and hidden uh, but you can do that with anything um, you can put a little compass button under there um, or really anything you want to all right guys now for the fun part we're going to do a little demonstration here uh, so we're going to take a piece of our jute twine and i'm just going to take my knife and i'm just going to start to uh, scrape off some of that wax that's on there and we're going to start separating that twine. Alright, so now that we've kind of got it separated, we've got a little ball of twine here. We're going to see if we can uh, get a fire started. Now once you've got that scratched off, you should be able to get a pretty good spark going. Now let's get down in here close and see if we can get this to light. There we go. All right, you can see it worked. It definitely uh, it wasn't that easy, you know, um, but it worked. All right, guys, now that is how it's done. So I hope this video has helped you out. If you have been uh, wanting to make a survival bracelet, or if you wanted something that's just going to be a little bit more helpful to you uh, than your average paracord bracelet, uh, this is a great way to do it. So I hope this has helped you guys out. Like I mentioned before, I am going to put a link to all of these things in the description below so you can go purchase them for yourself. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below and remember you can support us on Patreon. We have that link down below too. Thanks for watching guys. Please like, share, and subscribe and we'll see you next time.